You know, I'm a, a father of three boys, one starting high school, one starting middle school, and one just ending kindergarten. That's not the best family planning, but it does give me a good perspective into what's going through the minds of our kids. And I also have been coaching kids football for many, many years now. And one of the things that has alarmed me is that the teenage boys, the teenage young men that I've coached and have come to care about, are under the assumption that, you know what, smoking dope's no big deal. It's just no big deal. You know, we're decriminalizing it. It's not a big deal. You get a ticket. Look, they're talking about it up in Hartford. They're talking about it in different states. So, you know what, you know, get off my back. But then you listen to the stories of the people whose lives are actually affected by it. And that's kind of the, that's the comparison you have to make. That's the, that's the decision. That's the, the inner choice you're going to have to make when you're pushing a button here in about an hour or so. I ask everybody in this chamber to think back and say, all righty, how many parents called me and said, state rep, I want you to make it easier for my child to possess marijuana. Just do it accounting and then try and figure out how that went. I, I'd wager a bet that practically none of you got that phone call because, frankly, that's not good for parents, that's not good for kids, and that's not good for our towns and our society. So think about what we're doing here. These are policy decisions we're making. And what, with the policy decision that's in this bill, the same guy who's got, what do we say, 30 some odd joints, I think, we think about a half ounce is, if that guy grows it, he's broken the law. If that guy smuggles it into the state of Connecticut, he's broken the law. That guy smuggles it on an airplane or a ship or an air or across the borders. He's broken the law. If he sells it, takes the 30 joints and sells it, that guy's broken the law. However, if he has it on his body, he's good. Just going to get a ticket. But if then if he takes the 30 joints he has and he sells it again, well, he's broken the law. What kind of policy is that? I mean, what kind of public policy is it to take a spectrum of behavior that is illegal from cradle to grave? From, from whence you grow it to whence you sell it to whence you use it and say, you know, that's all illegal, except for that little part in the middle if you're holding it. That's good. That makes no sense. Stated policy here, I've heard it in the judiciary, I've heard it at different uh, discussions. Well, we've got too many kids, too many people who have criminal records, legacy records for small possessions of, of marijuana, and that's no good. All right, then you know what you do? You pass a law that expunges that. Let's have that debate. Let's have the debate that can actually help somebody clean that up on the back end once they've gotten their life back in order, as opposed to enabling people to get in trouble on the front end. Bad policy, bad decision. Finally, following up on some of the legal arguments that you heard from some colleagues and you've heard it before, the state of Connecticut, once again, this chamber and the state of Connecticut appears to be going out on its own, which I'm a state's rights guy, I'm fine with this, and is telling the federal government, you know what? When we think we're preempted, when we think there's a supremacy clause, when we think Fed law controls, we'll tell you. But if we don't, we're going to do our own thing. Well, if you're a states' rights guy, that's okay. But the way we do that here is inconsistent. For instance, in-state tuition violates Fed law. We don't care. We're going to pass that anyway. The health care, Obamacare, whatever you want to call it, we say, you know what, we have to pass state laws because we're bound by Fed law. Then, we're, then we are preempted and controlled. Captive audience. We had a long discussion in here, 11, 12 hours arguing that, in fact, it's preempted by federal law. You know what? We were going to do it anyway. Turns out we were right. Ask our own attorney general. Here we go again. Here we go again. We've got a Controlled Substances Act that's been in effect for 40-something years. The law is dead clear, dead clear that the Controlled Substances Act, the federal government, has the right to prosecute the possession of marijuana regardless of what the states say. So now we're going to have, potentially, two laws. One under the state that says, no big deal, you got a ticket. One under the federal law says, you know what, we could throw you in jail for up a year, up to a year. One's criminal, one maybe not. I could make, I could speak an hour about the implied preemption doctrine. Not going to do that. It's arcane. Everyone's half asleep anyway. But what I, what I will tell you is if you got two laws that you can't comply with, that's bad public policy. So think about it from the, the aspect of what's good for your neighbors, what's good for your neighbor's kids, what's good for your kids and then push that button. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.